In this video, we'll go through every single thing you need to know about grids to create responsive and pixel-perfect designs in Figma. So if you struggle with choosing the right grids for your website and mobile projects, keep watching this video. I'll break everything down step by step from choosing the right pixel grid to setting up columns and rows, and I'll also share my best practices and tips to streamline your workflow. I'll also throw in a Figma template with a little presentation and a few frames with the default settings I use for all my projects. So make sure to watch it till the end. Without further ado, let's jump straight into the video and set up our very first responsive grids. So first off, let's create a new frame and choose our preferred desktop dimensions. And for desktop, our default resolution will be 1440 by 1024. And some designers prefer to work on 1600 by 1200, but I prefer to work on smaller resolutions first and scale the designs up because it's much easier to scale the designs up than scale them down. Anyways, let's add a frame. So let's hit F on our keyboard and choose the desktop uh, pre-made template, this one. To add a layout grid, let's click on the frame and then go over the layout grid label and click on this plus icon. And you'll see that a grid will be added onto our frame. And this is the first option from the dropdown here. Uh, this creates a grid layout that we won't use today. And frankly, you'll use it very sparingly, maybe mainly to create icons and uh, logos. For this example, all you need to know here is that you can uh, change the size of your grid. So let me zoom in a little bit and you'll see that once I change the values here, uh, the grid will become smaller or uh, larger to reflect the size that we set for the grid here. And you'll also be able to change the color and the opacity of the color of your grid. We're not interested in grid today. We're only interested in columns and rows. So let's click on the second option from the dropdown, which is the columns. And let me zoom out a little bit right now and let's go over what we see here. And for the column grid, we'll be mainly designing on 12 column grid, maybe 10 or eight in some examples where, where the designs are not so compact and there is much more reading the room around your designs, but usually 12 columns seems to be like the sweet spot. That's a perfect starting point as it provides most flexibility and consistency when you're working with layouts that you can easily divide in let's say two, four, or even three uh, column blocks. And we'll get back to that later. Uh, once we have the entire column grid in place, I'll show you uh, how to work with this on an example. For the margins, I usually leave them between 70 to 96 pixels. Better, I leave around between 16 to 24, usually around 20. Uh, so let me just add a margin here, just so we're looking at the, the grid that I would normally use for a project. So why are these values important here? Let's look at this following example on the next page. And this is a design I created for the Figma Mastery course. What you're seeing here is the header, um, the main hero section consisting of two blocks, and then a social proof section with the logos uh, spread out across six different columns, and then a benefit section that's split into three uh, columns that are playing on a layout grid. So when configuring your grid, you'll need to decide between an eight pixel grid or maybe four pixel grid, which is more compact than eight pixel grid or a five pixel grid, which is uh, less common, but also used in the design industry. An eight pixel grid can also be divided into four pixels, like I said, which is more precise than a five pixel grid. And four and eight pixel grids are more common choices since they are much more scalable and most likely you'll only find five pixel grids used in bootstrap grids. Uh, with fixed uh, grid layouts and something we won't be using ourselves in this tutorial. The choice depends on your project requirements and your personal preferences as well as your uh, developer's preferences. And you need to have the pixel rhythm determined before you start designing uh, and constructing your desktop horizontal and uh, vertical grids. Let's go back to the our presentation file and continue setting up our grid. So this is the column grid and that's pretty much it. So when I uh, click on R uh, to draw a rectangle, you'll see that whenever I approach a certain column, it will automatically snap into grid. This is really helpful when you're designing websites and you want to make sure that you're following the pixel rhythm that we determined uh, previously. So let's say you have a header that takes up about like the full width of your frame, but you want the content inside of the header start at this point. So right here, let me change the fill over to, uh, to distinguish our content container from the, from the rest. So this will be where your container is sitting and that's your entire header width. Uh, and let's say you have a hero section right below and you want to split your hero section into columns. So let's say you want to use 640 pixels uh, of width for your left column and 640 pixels of width for your left column. 
And let's say right below your hero section, you have a section with uh, a few benefits and these take up, let's say uh, around four, uh, I mean 403 pixels of space. And then you're left with something like, uh, like this. In our example, maybe we, we uh, don't want to work with 403 uh, pixel. Then we need to change the gutter width and then see if this changes anything. So let's say we increase the gutter by four pixels and now we want to resize our column blocks. And now you'll see that if we zoom in a little bit and make sure they're snapping into the grid, you'll see that each one of those blocks is taking up 400 pixels of width, which is a little bit more ideal in our example here. So scale this down until we snap into the grid. So let's say uh, this would be the design that we create and that's the layer grid that we'll follow. Well, now that we have our columns sorted, let's incorporate some vertical structure with row grid. In row, in other words, uh, baseline grids work alongside column grids uh, to add the vertical rhythm to your designs. We don't have to close off the column grid that we already created. We can add another grid by clicking on this plus icon and then changing from the grid to row. And that's our row grid. So let's customize it now. And right here, uh, what you need to know is that we'll be tweaking the count and gutter height uh, to align with our design's vertical spacing. Usually under count, you would want to put a really high number because uh, we're going to stack our rows, rows from the top. So make sure that the count is high enough that whenever you uh, extend, okay, so let me just move these out to the right. So whenever you say uh, extend this canvas a little bit, you'll see that at some point the rows cut off. So you need to make sure that they are, they are taking up enough space to fill the entire frame that you're working on. So let's go back to our rows one more time. And the thing that you are interested in, if let's say you determine that you want to follow a, an eight pixel grid, uh, you need to set the height to eight and the gutter either to zero or to eight as well. You can also offset your rows by eight. And this way, now that we already determined what pixel grid we follow, and then we have the, the uh, horizontal rhythm already in place with eight pixel increments between our design elements. In this case, we can zoom in and then make sure that we are in fact following the eight point grid here. Whenever I resize my elements, they will also snap into the grid to let me know that I have in fact reached the eight pixel increment value. This is a very precise way of working. And now whenever you, um, look up your values and to look up the values between your elements you need to click option or alt on windows just hover over the elements sitting next to your elements that you have selected and to help you align these elements a little bit faster apart from using the arrow keys uh, to change the spacing values by one you can hold shift and use the notch property uh, to jump 10 values at a time. But since we're going to be designing on a four pixel or, or an eight pixel grid, we need to optimize our notch value just so it's jumping eight pixels at a time and not 10, because then, then we jump 10 pixels and then we have to move back or up two pixels at a time. And to change the notch amount, you have to go to the menu here, go under preferences, and then find this notch amount option or just click command and forward slash, which will bring up the quick menu and then you can type in the notch here and then the notch amount will appear right below. So let's change the big, no big notch to eight. And then now whenever I move, uh, whenever I click shift and then move to either to left, right or top or bottom, I will be jumping eight pixels at a time instead of 10, which is more ideal when you're working on a, an eight pixel grid. Now that we have both columns and rows in place, uh, let's explore the differences between the fluid grids and the fixed grids. So this, what you see here is a fluid grid. And a, a fluid grid is a grid that adapts to the width of the device or the frame that you're designing on, while a fixed grid that maintains consistent width no matter the device frame size. Fluid grids are perfect for responsive design, like we see here whenever I, um, let me just re remove those rectangles here, and then also hide the rose grid for now. So fluid grids are perfect for responsive designs as they adjust automatically to different screen sizes. Like you can see here, whenever I uh, stretch the frame out, the frame will resize and with respect to the values that we set on the gutter and the margins. 
and fix grid. Let me just go over to the columns and then change the type to center and uh, change the width of the column to let's say 85, 30. Fixed grids are ideal when you need precise control over your design elements and you design for specific breakpoints or devices only. As you can see here, the grid is not changing. It doesn't adjust to the size of the frame whenever we are resizing it. And usually you'll be designing on a fluid grid. So let's change the type to stretch and then the settings, the gutter to 24. And your project's objectives will determine whether you should use the fluid grid or the fixed grid. But in like 90% of examples, you probably will be designing on a fluid grid. Whenever you're designing, uh, let me maybe just switch over to the example here just so it's easier to um, explain. You'll find yourself toggling your grids a lot when you're aligning your elements, you're fixing your spacing, and then you're toggling them off when you need to look at your designs unobstructed and design your components. That's what I would usually do. Let's say I wanted to uh, design a new element and then see if, if it aligns on the grid uh, just right, I would just hit Control and G and then make sure it's positioned in the right place. And then toggle it off again and then look at the designs, analyze them and then see if I need to change anything else. Right, so let's go back to our uh, grid here and then uh, toggle it on again. And then once you have your grid in place, so let's say we are happy with the, the row grids and the column grid that we set up on this frame, we can now save it into our uh, style and then reuse it across all of our designs. And to save a layout grid style, you just need to click on these four rectangles icon here, labeled style, and then click on the plus icon one more time and then name it. So for this one, we can name it SM for small, which is a small desktop and type in the width that we're designing on. So this could be SM desktop 1440 pixel. Whenever we add a new frame, so let's go hit F, and then choose the desktop frame. We can now click on the style again and then choose the saved style from the dropdown. All right, so that's the desktop grid done. Uh, but before we proceed to mobile devices, let me just quickly go over the box model with you. For this, we need to go back to our example here and then analyze this. Box model is used to define how your design elements will be translated to code in web development and how they will be placed inside of uh, the design. So whether this image, it can float without any uh, constraints, it needs to be placed into a container. And then this way you make sure that whenever you resize your elements, it will behave in the right way. And that's why a good practice to apart from setting the side margins and gutters is to also think about the padding, uh, the border and margin values that you set on the elements inside of your containers. Each component, on this design plays a role in spacing and positioning. So keep this concept in mind when designing to ensure uh, an organized layout. So let's say uh, you want to uh, place both of these containers, the text container and the call to action container into a copy container, and then the image container uh, with the image and some objects needs to be sitting uh, into a bigger container, which is encapsulating the whole hero container and that hero container is sitting into in a hero section. The whole thing deserves its own video, so if you'd like to see me break down the box model in a full detail, just drop it in the comments and I'll make sure to line it up in one of the future videos. All right, so with the box model out of the way, let's adapt our layout for mobile and tablet devices. So let's go back to the presentation page and let's create a new frame. We can uh, also duplicate the desktop frame and then resize the frame from the dropdown, find the iPad mini, uh, let's say Pro 11, and then unlink this style, detach the style, remove the rows for now, and modify this existing column layout. For uh, tablets, I usually use either six or eight grids, and for the margins, I leave them between 20 to 40, 30 being like the sweet spot for uh, tablet devices and gutter it's between 16 to 24 but for this example let's just uh, go with maybe maybe 20. and again i try to follow the either four or eight pixel rhythm here and that's about it for the tablet uh, so let's uh, duplicate it by hitting command and d and then go over to the frames and select the iphone 13 mini frame and one more time let's click on the layer grid settings change the count from six to four the margins to Either I'm, I leave margins between 14 to 20, but let's say for this example, we want to go with 20. Gutters, uh, usually between 8 to 16, call them desktop, tablet, and mobile. Before we finish this video, let's also discuss the importance of documenting your layout grids 
uh, for the developers working on the file. And to visualize this better, let me go to the Figma Mastery file that I have included for all of the students. Uh, if we scroll down to the style guide, you'll see that I have in fact documented both the grids for the desktop and mobile devices here. And you need to know that properly documenting your layer grids is super important for the design handoff and a good collaboration with your team. So be sure to include detailed notes on your grid settings for each main device breakpoint, like the column count, the gutter width, um, or the, the margin sizes. And this should really help the developers and other designers working with you on the file to understand your layout choices and to make sure that the transition between the design and development is going smooth, uh, which is really tricky in some cases. And whenever I'm designing something and it needs more uh, information or needs more context, I also leave those sticky notes, kind of looking uh, comments, and then explain how uh, certain elements should behave on a layout grid when they're being resized by the device breakpoints. Now just a quick info, if you're interested in learning more about designing for mobile, uh, make sure to check out my design manual ebook where we design over 130 screens of a FinTech mobile app, both for iOS and Android platforms. And the ebook covers everything you need to know about setting up mobile grids and designing for mobile devices. And on the other hand, if you're interested in designing for the web, uh, you can check out my ultimate guide to web design ebook. And this ebook covers everything you need to know about setting up grids, maintaining consistency, and using the box model for the website development. Plus there's a fully responsive landing page design included for you to look at, practice, design, and learn from uh, yourself. And that's it guys. I hope you found this tutorial valuable. And as always, if you enjoyed it, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated with future tutorials and content. And until next time guys, happy designing. This was Yuri Adrian and I'll see you very, very soon.